In my previous video that looked at the HANA Developer CLI tool example, I was running completely on my own laptop. Uh, of course, running with Node.js installed on my local laptop, um, running from a command line prompt. Uh, so everything is installed locally. So for instance, when I do HANA CLI version, you can see that it has been installed to uh, my local C drive and it, it's running out of there. We did the NPN link so it would be available from anywhere. And when I did my demos, for instance, within uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code, I was doing all of this development locally as well, running Node locally. And even when I was doing HANA CLI status, for instance, here. Oh, oops, if I go into my DB folder. That was running against my HANA Express, see HXE host. So that's all running in a VM on my uh, on my local laptop as well. But what I'd like to do in this video is show you how this tool also works in the cloud environment as well, in cloud shells, uh, where Node.js is, is hosted in the cloud as well, hitting a remote HANA instance, also part of the SAP Cloud platform. Uh, the tool is by no means locked into local development. Um, that's kind of where it started. I was doing a lot of local development uh, and it, it made things easier, but it also works perfectly fine in the cloud. And there's really no code differences to, to make it work between the two. We'll see a little bit of that as we, as we start to break down uh, the coding of how the tool is built. Before we do that, I want to show you what this looks like in various cloud shells as well. So what I've done is uh, I'm looking here at the SAP Business Application Studio. And uh, this is the SAP new development environment that uh, uh, in the long term will replace the SAP Web ID full stack for, for SAP Cloud Platform based development. And what you see here is it's, it's essentially like running Visual Studio Code, but in a web browser hosted by SAP on, on our cloud platform. And for instance here, I've got a shell, but this shell is not running on my local laptop as it was here when I was running in Visual Studio Code locally. If I come here, for instance, and I do node version, uh, dash V, sorry, uh, you can see this is Node.js running in a little Linux shell that's hosted on the cloud platform. This is actually a, 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 Kubernetes, uh, a, a Kubernetes environment where we're hosting all these workspaces for developers to, to log in and, and begin to work. So the nice thing about this is there's no local installation at all. I'm completely running in a web browser. I don't have to install VS Code locally. I don't have to install Node.js locally or manage any of the dependencies and certificates or any of the security setup. It's all ready for me to go immediately here in, in the cloud. Uh, and basically, the, the same sort of things that I, I did here uh, to get the project going, I can, uh, on my local machine, I can do here in this environment as well. I can start by just cloning the project from GitHub and that'll bring it into my local Business Application Studio shell environment. So give that a second to finish cloning. And now when we go in there, and then just like we did when we first cloned it locally, I'll run an NPN install to install all the dependencies. And now I'll do the same NPN link. And this will make 
the command available globally. So now you'll see, just like it worked on my local machine, now I can go over to a different project here. And I can do CLI version. And you see I'm getting my version information, but it's now running out of home, user, projects, and then my clone directory bin. Uh, so now this Honda CLI command is available to use in, in any of the projects that I have uh, available here in the Business Application Studio um, and, and run from the, uh, the cloud shell that's provided by the Business Application Studio. Now, if you remember from the previous video, and I'll go back to the environment here to, uh, to show you, this is just our little, our little test that we did here. Remember that, that in order to persist the connection string and, and parameters, we had to connect, uh, and then we could create a container. It would write the connection information into this default ENV JSON. Um, uh, but we, we had to do an initial database connection with an administrative user, and, and then we could uh, um, create the container, uh, which generated the technical users and things like that. Now, over here in the Business Application Studio, we can take the same approach, but it's actually even easier uh, to do over here. Let me show you what we have. In the Business Application Studio, I have the ability to, uh, to uh, look into Cloud Foundry. And what I've done is I've already logged in uh, to, to Cloud Foundry, basically ask you for your API endpoint and your org and, and your space and, uh, and your uh, credentials, your username and password. Uh, and that's what I've persisted here in this connection name demo. And then when I expand demo, what you're seeing here is all the existing services that have already been created. So, so if I logged in with the, uh, the CF command line or went to the cloud cockpit, I, I could go ahead and create an instance of my uh, HANA HDI container. That's what you're seeing here, this team task HDI container. Now, when I want to bring this into my project, this is actually quite simple. I can just right mouse click and say, bind a service to a locally run application. And I want to bring it into my bookshop application. And let's go ahead and put it in the DB folder. And what it's done is it's pulled the credentials out of Cloud Foundry and written them into a file here in, in my project. Very, very similar to the, what the tool, what we did in, in VS Code locally to generate the, the default ENV JSON. Now, the only problem with this uh, ENV file is that um, it's okay for, for running an application, but we need it available from the command shell, and we need uh, the XS ENV module to be able to read from it. So at least right now, what that means is we have to go in and uh, rename this. So we'll just rename this default env.json. And what you'll see is the format is really close. What, what the application studio writes by default, uh, the format's very close, but not exactly what we need for XS ENV uh, to be able to process it, unfortunately. But we just have to take our VICAP services and turn it into uh, properly for more formatted JSON. So, so that's all I've done at this point. Uh, I've, I've used the, the built-in functionality to go extract the credentials, so I'm not having to cutting and pasting or, or manually retype them. I do a little tweak on the file to make it work better with uh, the XS environment module, Node.js module. And now what you'll see, if I come to change into my DB folder, and I do a HANA CLI status. Now I'm connected to that HANA database. And, and what you'll see here is if I, if I scroll up here, uh, our host information, well, this is HANA as a service, so uh, connected to a generated host. Um, so no longer running locally. I'm now connected against the HANA as a service running on the SAP Cloud Platform. Um, but I say, have the same sort of uh, uh, access. I am connected to my container. So, for instance, I could do things like uh, uh, CLI tables to get the list of the tables that are in my project. Uh, CLI table. Uh, 
let's do task task and I can do the introspection into my table so all the things that you saw that we were able to do the other day with the Honda CLI tool working locally against Honda Express on our local machine also works perfectly fine here in a cloud shell rowing going against Hana as a service uh, running on the SAP cloud platform as well. I also want to show you that uh, one of my favorite commands is the CDS command that allows us to uh, preview any database table or view via a CDS OData interface, even run it in a little Fiori UI. And what I have here is uh, I have no running services in my in my project. I mean, if you look at my server SRV folder, I've, I've put nothing there yet. There's no CDS files, there's no, no OData exposure. But uh, just like we did locally, I can come here and run the HANA CLI CDS command, tell it what table I want to go against. And what you see here is uh, it, it tells you that a service is now listening on port uh, 3010. Do you want to open it in a new tab? Go ahead and open it in a new tab. And the Business Application Studio has now exposed that cloud shell process over HTTP. I don't have to worry about doing any port mappings or anything like that. And, and if we come here, we can see the, uh, the metadata of the service. We can uh, browse into the OData service just fine. Uh, the Swagger UI preview works here as well. There we are. And if I come back here, our little Fury test UI should also work just fine from the Business Application Studio as well. There we are, there's our preview of the data in our table. All this running only via the, the HANA CLI tool, which we're able to install simply by cloning it from Git, doing npn install, and then npn link. And just to further demonstrate the, uh, the openness uh, of, of, this, uh, of this approach that we're using here, I want to show you doing the same thing that we just did in the SAP Business Application Studio, but in a couple other Cloud Shell development environments uh, hosted in other hyperscalers. So um, uh, we'll start here with uh, uh, Google Cloud Shell, and I've done the same operations to, uh, to do a git clone, npn install, and npn link. So as you can see here, if I do HANA CLI version, there we are. We've got our, uh, it's installed, it's accessible outside of the folder that, uh, that we get cloned it in. And I've done the same sort of thing here. I've just uploaded our default ENV JSON with our connection string. Still gonna connect this over to a HANA instance that's running in the SAP Cloud Platform, a HANA as a service. So the HANA doesn't have to be installed running in the same uh, environment that you're doing development. Here I am on Google Cloud Services, but my HANA instance is not running on, on Google Cloud, uh, but I can access it all the same. If I do HANA CLI status, I see my connection still to my HANA as a service, still my container user, and I can do things here, HANA CLI tables, same sort of thing here. On a CLI, CDS, SAP, team, task, tasks. We can run our CDS preview interface here as well. And we can open the web preview. And here it is running, just like we saw it in the Business Application Studio, sort of proxied properly through the port of the cloud shell. We don't have to worry about 
really any of that from from our aspect as a developer it happens sort of automatically behind the scenes there we are hitting our table uh, just like we did uh, in the business application studio example but of course we're not limited to just the google cloud shell here is a another example that i want to bring over here's Amazon's uh, AWS Cloud9. I've done the uh, the same steps here to do the Git clone, uh, npn install, npn link, and uh, I'm not going to repeat the entire demo here because it basically is just the same. Oh, it's a little weird that there we are. Uh, but uh, what you can see here, I can run the HANA CLI version. And uh, the, the same tool is available in whatever folders, whatever projects that you're working on over here in this environment. Once again, I didn't show all the same steps because it's basically just a repeat of, of everything you've seen, but working here in a completely another cloud environment. Um, so I hope what you've taken away from this is, uh, you know, command line tool, only dependencies are on Node.js which is available in, in most of these cloud development environments. We can connect to our remote HANA instance. It doesn't have to be running on the same cloud environment. Uh, gives us a lot of flexibility to choose development environments, connectivity options, and, and basically develop wherever we want to develop and, and still get good insights and availability into our backend HANA database. <laughs>